talent in our, our community and school. Uh, so we appreciate you coming. I wanted to real quick recognize the Redmond committee members. They're all back here ready to serve you. They've been here since about 8.30, uh, you know, uh, making all the food. So let's give them a big round of applause. They do a lot. And I also want to thank our sponsors who are on the board over here. Uh, our festival couldn't uh, be presented without our local business sponsors. So when you see these folks, thank them for sponsoring the Red Bud Festival. I um, also want to thank ARC TV for being here. They've been here, I don't know, every year for about 20 or more. <laughs> um, and they put a lot of what we do for the Red Bud Festival on. Uh, their television podcast or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that electronically IT first, but anyway, they do a great job for us. Uh, I'd also like to ask C.H. Uh, Wallace, the mayor of Homemaker, to come up and say grace before we start our meal. And then, Yvonne, you can lead us right, right on down. Thank you, Jim, and I just want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting uh, the Red Bud Festival. Uh, before we have prayer, I would like to ask you to bow your head for a moment of silence uh, in honor of a very special friend uh, who was also a member of our town council, Daryl Dye, who passed away yesterday. So if you would bow your head a moment of silence in honor of Daryl. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon our community. We thank you for the folks that have gave of their time to prepare the Red Bud Festival and keep it going for 38 years. We ask your blessing over today as we close out our events. We ask your blessing over the food. May it be a nourishment to your bodies and your bodies to their service. Amen. Thank you, C.H. And... Uh... We'll just give you a heads up. We've got a canoe race coming up this afternoon and we're asking all the canoers to probably end the race at the Carla Herndon Park because of an oncoming storm that we don't want anybody to get stuck in. But we are going to start the race. The river looks good, so uh, hopefully it'll hold off until uh, our canoers and kayakers get down to Carla Herndon Park. So with that, Let's uh, go ahead and have our meal, and then we'll have our program with some recognitions afterwards. So enjoy the meal. over the years to keep this going, but it's the part of our festival where we ask young people and adults to interview someone or give a story about life in and around Homemaker. Uh, so they're put out in books every three or four years when we get a good number to uh, go press. But uh, this year we 
had a lot of participation from council, which is our neighbor across Big A, and Amy Presley, the teacher over there that helped get a lot of essays submitted, is going to help me give out the award. Thank you, Amy. Barbara Altizer, I mean Barbara Blocker, I'm so sorry, that's another Barbara. Uh, and her team, and over the years, Carolyn Puckett, and before her, Kathleen Taylor and others, really promoted the Red Bud Essay Contest as a way to preserve the history of our region. And I think we've got five or six books. How many books do we have, Diane? Six. Six. So some of those are back on the back table to uh, to purchase. They're a wealth of information about growing up in and around Homemaker back through the years. This year, uh, Barbara came up with a great idea to have a theme for our Red Bud Essay Contest and do it on a Red Bud Country in the winter, spring, summer, and fall. So this year's essays were, uh, we asked folks to focus on winter, stories that had to do with their experiences growing up in this area during the winter times, you know, sleigh riding hills and all kinds of uh, opportunities to talk about things that happen during our winter months, Christmas, days out of school, and all that sort of thing. So uh, our goal is to publish a seasonal book, getting all four seasons, so it'll be four years, three more years, to publish something, hopefully. And they also, we also hope to start a photograph contest beginning this year with photographs depicting winter scenes uh, for our next year's festival. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and recognize our Red Bud Essay Award winners. This year in the this year in the sixth and seventh grade category, first place goes to Jeffrey Siebert or Cybert. I'm sure I might have got that name wrong. He's a sixth grader from Swords Creek, and Mrs. Dye was his teacher. Sit it. I'm sorry. You're on TV now. And the name of his stories uh, were you a story was Were You Alive in the 1940s? Correct and you interviewed Betty Dye. So, first place winner, Jeffrey Sibbert. Sibbert. I've got to look ahead here and make sure I know the, how to pronounce all these names. I'm sorry about that, Jeffrey. Uh, second place goes to Ashley Jackson at Homemaker Elementary. Her teacher was Mrs. McFadden, and her story was winter in the 1950s. I think there's a theme going here. She interviewed Joan Stick. Thank you very much, Ashley. And third place is Lacey Shortridge from Homemaker Elementary. Is Lacey here? Karen Lowe was her teacher, and her story was The Winter Days, and she interviewed Fred Mullins from Jewel Ridge, Virginia. We'll make sure she gets her, her prize. Okay, in the ninth and 10th grades, first place goes to Alyssa Deal from Council. surprise, her teacher was Amy Presley. The name of her essay was a 1970s Christmas. We put a Christmas through the decades book together here at the end of this. Her, uh, she interviewed Keith Crabtree, and thank you, Alyssa. Second place goes to Emily Taylor from Council. Decorating for Christmas. That sounds like fun. Thank you very much. And 
And third place goes to Brian Compton from Council. And I want to read this one. His essay was Winter Farming. So I'm sure there's a lot of good information in there. Thank you, Brian. Okay, we're jumping up to our 11th and 12th grade classes uh, to announce their winners. First place goes to Madison Davis from Homemaker High School. Phyllis Dye was her teacher, and the name of her story was The Best Winter Memories, and she interviewed Harold Richards from Raven. Second place goes to Amber Perkins from Council. And the name of her story was Mr. Nicholas. <laughs> and third place goes to Sierra Davis. Sarah's from Twin Valley High School, but she uh, is co program through the council just across the mountain near Whitewood, I would think. Uh, she is a G, uh, she is a student at Twin Valley. She attends Twin Valley High School, and the name of her story was A Little Heart for Christmas. Thank you. get working on some of our adults to take Kathleen's mantra, write it down, and do some stories. Jerry Osborne and I can tell enough stories to fill a book. Uh, we told some this morning. Uh, most of them probably aren't quite true. Our memories are slipping a little bit, but uh, we did have one adult uh, entry this year, and the winner of our adult contest is Kathy Jones. was Christmas on Big A Mountain. So thank you so much, Kathy. Appreciate it. And I could also say the same thing about Dwight Jackson. We can tell stories about life on School Street in Homemaker. And our adventures around the school over the years. But, um, you know, we'll, we're hoping to reinvigorate our Red Bed Essay Contest. So if you're sitting back there and think you have a story, start thinking about it. Next year will be spring. Is that right, Barbara? So be thinking about a spring in Red Bed Country story for next year. Okay, we're going to go ahead and with our program and <clears throat> this year, we're pleased to once again honor Honecker High School's academic team, which won the state championship in Class 1A for the second time out of the last three years. Yeah. And last year, they finished second. So, you know, the story of the Honecker High School academic team goes back about 20 years, I think, to when uh, Zakawiji Zach started the uh, academic team, or at least he was one of the primary coaches. And over those years, they've won like 18 out of 20 regional uh, academic team uh, championships, gone to state a bunch of times, and won it how many times now, Charlie? Four times. You know, that says a lot for this school here and our administration and teachers over the years who have supported uh, the academic uh, structure here at Conmaker High School. And uh, we should all be proud of their accomplishments as well as many others on the athletic field. We've had state champions and runners up in a lot of our sports. And uh, going even further, that says a lot about the community because we get a lot of parent support, community support, business support. It takes uh, all of us to 
back these young men and women and give them something to work for. And really, they're, they're working hard and it's evidence in the accomplishments that they've achieved. So I'm going to ask uh, the coach, Charlie Perkins, to come up. We're going to give each one of them a certificate of recognition from the Red Bed Committee. And as a small token of our appreciation uh, for what they're doing, and uh, it starts at the top. Charlie's been working for four years, you know, three years? Fifty years. Okay. What time? Four and a half. <laughs> but uh, Charlie's a uh, graduate of Honecker High School. He was on the academic team when he was here, and he was well schooled by Coach Z. And uh, when he came back to Honecker, from, I have to say, the College of William & Mary is uh, something I was very happy to hear. Uh, someone else, well, there have been a lot of folks gone to William & Mary, but I uh, was happy to find out that Charlie had been there, and done well, and came back. So, Charlie, here's your award, and I'm going to call everybody up and give them an award, let them stand here, and then ask you to say a couple things. Charlie's able assistant is Kayla Perkins. So, Kayla, come on up. I'm sure that between the two of you, y'all are working equally hard. Every team has a leader, generally chosen as a captain. And in this case, uh, Aiden Cook has served as the captain of this team this year. And uh, we'd like to have him come up and accept his certificate. <laughs> okay, and she's not here, but Michaela Short is the co-captain. And Charlie will say some things about each member later. And the rest of the team, uh, all of whom are important, and they, the younger ones are working hard to move up. Next year's got more challenges, so um, I understand they're already working and competing some uh, this spring. But uh, the next uh, member is Heath Hubbard. Brianna Perkins. Cassie Atkins. Mackenzie Sykes, who's not here. We'll give these to you, Charlie, you can get them to him. Patrick Hess, who isn't here. Abigail, Abigail Sites. Okay. And the last one's Leah Music, also not here. So, um, as I said, it takes a lot of work. It takes a dedicated coach. We all know that our coaches, academic sports, otherwise spend way, way more hours than they get paid for, for sure. But they do it out of a passion. So uh, I know Charlie's worked hard. I thought I'd give him a chance to say just a couple of words about the team and the experience of winning the state championship. Thank you, Jim. And, uh, thank you, Red Bull Committee, for having us here today. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Jim really summed up really well. We've got a tradition of success here at Home Acre on this academic team. It's uh, something this town should really be proud of. And I know you all are. But, uh, when I talk to people that are kind of in the know about an academic team around the country, it's pretty well recognized that Home Acre is one of those towns that just really knows what this team's all about. And we've got such a great support group from all y'all. So I want to thank you all. I think you all should have a round of applause for yourselves, to be quite honest. <laughs> We really appreciate it. Uh, like 
I said everybody on this team's worked so hard to get to the level that we've made it to, and uh, uh, I just can't brag enough about them. But I don't want to sit here all day and talk your ear off. Uh, well, we've got Mr. Aiden Cook here, who's well, he's number two. He passed me up on the career scoring list this year, actually. And that's one point he's very proud of. Uh, <laughs> And uh, of course, we missed a few people here today that couldn't make it, but uh, they've all done such a great, great job. They've been working at this so hard, and it's just, I, I feel really blessed just to get to coach this group of kids. Um, they've just, they've taken everything that I've thrown at them, and they just keep on, you know, being hungry and want more and more and more. So um, I'm so proud of all of them. Thank you all very much. Okay, does anybody have any hard questions to throw at this group? I hear if, if you have anything on mythology, they can knock that out of the park. Well, okay, uh, that concludes our program. You're welcome to stay and socialize and visit. Uh, but uh, we appreciate everybody coming up. Pam, do you have something? because she's been the faithful member of our garden club who has worked diligently to get a love sign like you see in all the communities yeah. around. Uh, our garden club is purchasing that along with a grant that we applied for. Jamie is great on words. You know, <laughs> how good that grant sounds. But it is going to be a place where you go around Cogstown we like to thank uh, CH and them is going to light it up and put, put a light on it. And in the middle so of the circle, we're going to have a red bed tree. So that will be up hopefully before school goes out. We were hoping for the red bed festival, but they did not get finished. But we just wanted everybody to know we are going to have a love sign. <laughs> I want to just say this, <clears throat> as some of you know, I grew up in Honeaker. I'm still a Honeaker girl, but I live in New York a lot of the time, and then <clears throat> I have a farm over in Belfast. But here's, here's the thing. When I'm out there in, you know, somewhere, Bill, there's this feeling that, you know, Appalachia is this place that, you know, everybody's just, uh, nobody, nobody cares. There's no smart people. Who are they? They would just all shuffle on off and be fine. And so many terrible stereotypes. And to see Honecker winning, this, this is so exciting. And I tell everybody I know about my high school and the forensic team and, and all the other things that the schools in Russell County have done and all the sports teams and so forth. And I think we have to spread the word. I don't know where, whether you've read um, Hillbilly Elegy or not, but suddenly everybody thinks that J.D. Vance knows everything there is to know about Appalachia, and it's really a terrible book. <laughs> so don't read it. <laughs> but, but a lot of people have read it, and they have had erroneous impressions. So it's, we should say to these young people, they are wow. Mm. Wow. <laughs> because so many people were talking about it. And I read the foreword, and it made me so mad, yes. <laughs> I could not finish it. It, just, it was not the Appalachia I grew up in, Absolutely and I doubt not. if anybody in this room grew up in that sort of uh, world that was depicted in that book. But you're right, we need to champion, and that's what we're trying to do in our small way, here with the Red Bed Festival to honor our academic teams and our sports teams when they do achieve the highest uh, degree of attainment in, in whatever endeavor they're doing, and that's a state championship. And I think Charlie's taken these kids to some national events, at least one in Chicago. We did the past. Yeah. So, you know, they're, as he said, I know around the state, when they say on the academic team circles, Homemaker, they know they're in for a, a match. <laughs> so, uh, you know, those are the kinds of things we need to do. And 
Pam and the Garden Club and the things, the love signs. This is the 50th anniversary of the Virginia is for Lovers uh, slogan, which is arguably maybe the first or second best known logo in the world. And, uh, you know, it starts out with the word Virginia. So we celebrate all things Virginia. And those love signs, it's amazing the number of people that travel around just to get their pictures taken in front of them. Each one of them is different, kind of unique to their communities. So that's a great thing that you all are doing there. And lastly... Wait, I want to let them in on a secret that they might not know. Tell, the very first uh, ad for Virginia's for Lovers was in like Brides magazine and you tell the rest. <laughs> <laughs> well the very first Virginia's for Lovers ad was in Brides magazine and I'm in it, <laughs> believe it or not. I'm in the background, but several of my good friends uh, are in it. We were at Williamsburg and a friend of mine who had a beard, this was 1969, so no big uh, you know surprise there, but a guy stopped him and asked him if he'd want to uh, go to a photo shoot. And did he have any other friends with somewhat long hair and facial hair? And it just so happened that he was in my fraternity, so he and I and about four others, among some other folks, are in this ad. I'm in the very back. You can barely tell it's me, but uh, anyway, that, that's my connection to Virginia's for lovers in the history 50 years ago. But the other thing about uh, Homemaker High School, I'm hoping to, and I've talked to uh, Mr. Bush about this, uh, to start, help get started a Homemaker High School Alumni Association. And if we get it started and ask our alumni to pay $25 a year dues, and then take those funds and support school activities like the academic team, our football, basketball, baseball, uh, soccer teams, all of our sports, girls and boys. Uh, we could raise a lot of money and it's not, as Larry Combs said, that won't break any of us up, $25 a year. And uh, we hope to get that off the ground. If you would like to be involved, I'm going to try to get the ball rolling and uh, just give me a call or give me a shout. And we're trying to set up a meeting with as many class representatives as possible, maybe later this school year. So keep that in mind. Anybody else have anything they'd like to say or add? Any more testifying? <laughs> yeah. Well, once again, we certainly appreciate everyone coming. Again, visit all you want. I know the class of 68 is going to hang around and have a little business meeting. So uh, in the meantime, we'll be helping clean up and uh, thanks again for coming. We'll see you next year. Hope we'll see you academic team members next year.